Now that we are well versed in understanding how software defined networks actually are configured, um, if you consider a real world deployment of an enterprise, how would you consider migrating to software defined networking? Would it be a gradual process? Would it be a one time flag day event? Or would it be a mix of the two? Uh, well, we have a Usenix paper published back in 2014 by D11. Uh, it was published in a very prestigious conference, Usenix. Uh, this paper talks about the approaches which have been in vogue. And uh, if we adopt software defined networking, how could we possibly migrate in a stepwise manner without uh, giving away the uh, production or, and the functionality of an operational legacy system. So existing enterprise networks are expected to orchestrate um, better user oriented services through software defined networking. Um, since most of the hardware is non SDN compliant and we need to incorporate SDN, we must talk about uh, legacy systems and uh, uh, SDN enabled networking equipment. So considering these two and deploying them in order to um, uh, not give up on the functionality of a legacy systems challenge is the deployment because uh, we are interested in making sure that uh, SDN implementation is regressively robust. Uh, for that, um, Panopticon, uh, uh, the, the research paper, proposes the combination of legacy and SDN switches. Um, how it realizes it is, it provides a user interface or an abstraction of a logical software defined networking view of the entire network, which is partially upgraded legacy network. Uh, this is not a perfect uh, situation because we have legacy system as well. So some resource constraints have to be taken into consideration. Imagine we, we had a um, software defined network with legacy systems. How could we possibly uh, realize um, in, in addition to uh, Panopticon? We have a dual stack. Dual stack actually means that uh, the legacy systems uh, and software defined networking are implemented as silos. So there's no interaction between the two. And this particular scheme is robust, but uh, this in the larger interest of an enterprise uh, splits it into unwanted islands. Then we have full edge SDN deployment. Uh, in this case, the end-to-end -end control is enabled uh, through SDN while uh, only using uh, the traditional networking elements as, uh, as they are using their native operation. Uh, this uh, might seem uh, plausible uh, because we are only considering the deployment uh, on end devices. Uh, this is not exactly how we could possibly think about network. For that, Panopticon is a partially deployed uh, SDN, which provides an interface to the uh, network administrators and users to act uh, more like a quasi SDN deployment. So this is what we can uh, look at it visually. We have a dual stack where there's no overlap or uh, traffic flow between SDN and legacy systems. Uh, then we have a SDN platform that provides legacy network infrastructure to behave kind of SDN oriented by working only on the edge. And then we have Panopticon where we are having an immersed experience where we have the network elements comprising both legacy and SDN enabled uh, hardware. And then we have the SDN platform on the access devices, which are all SDN enabled. Let's now look at the possible uh, steps that would be involved in its implementation. Uh, first of all, there's an underlying assumption that SDN is not available on every switch. So what is our goal? Our goal is to provide an interface to the users which is SDN enabled. All the traffic to and from the SDN uh, connected ports would always be restricted to something known as a safe path. A safe path actually means whatever 
uh, we do, the traffic must uh, route through at least one SDN switch. Uh, they call, uh, the authors call it uh, waypoint enforcement. And they realize this through splitting the entire network into a kind of a, a cellular arrangement, or you can think about Voronoi uh, diagram, uh, where we have blocks, each comprising at least one SDN element uh, at the uh, edge of every cell block. Now, the goal is to look at it as, uh, as an optimization problem, where we are connecting the network elements um, of a certain graph uh, by removing the SDN uh, switches and links and making sure that uh, uh, these uh, connected network components stay uh, in, um, in, in, in an overlaid form for the SDN. In order to implement this, we need a very smart uh, network-wide policy on the hardware. The hardware is uh, uh, assumed to be uh, the layer 2 devices like uh, Ethernet switches would, would be implementing layer 2 forwarding, learning, spanning tree protocols, uh, uh, VLAN identifiers such as A2 2.1Q and uh, per LAN, uh, per VLAN STP. The, we have got routers. Uh, not all these routers and switches are uh, SDN enabled. So what happens is we have a situation where uh, look at the scenario here. We've got a physical topology and we've got its logical uh, equivalent. The physical topology is uh, comprising SDN and non-SDN enabled devices, network elements. Here you can see we've got cell block uh, A, we've got cell block B, we've got cell block C, uh, D and E. Now here you can see that uh, we've got four cell blocks. Each cell block has certain ports which are uh, SDN controlled ports or SDN enabled ports. So we can think about the uh, physical cell blocks to be connected to at least one SDN controlled uh, switch. That is why on the right hand side we, we, we achieve the logical topology in which uh, the all SDN controlled ports are connected to SDN switches via something known as uh, pseudo wires. Pseudo wires actually means it's, it's a basically blend of uh, the traffic uh, comprising SDN and non-SDN enabled paths. The paper that I was referring to is uh, Panopticon, reaping the benefits of incremental deployment in enterprise networks. It's a very uh, well-cited paper. You might as well like to have a look.